In this video, we're going to talk about how to write the electron configuration of ions. So in this example, we want to write the electron configuration of the Mg2 plus ion. But first, we're going to write the electron configuration of the element. And then we'll use that to find the configuration of the ion. Let's begin by writing down the sublevels. 1s, 2s, 3s, 2p, 3p, and then 3d. S can hold up to two electrons, P can hold up to six, and D can hold up to 10 electrons. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write the configuration until the exponents add up to the atomic number of Mg. So we're gonna start with this one. So first it's 1s2, and then we'll move on to 2s. So this is gonna be 2s2. And then after 2s, it's 2p, then 3s. p can hold up to 6, and then 3s2. So this is the electron configuration of the element magnesium. So if that's the case, what is the electron configuration of the ion Mg2 plus? All we need to do is take away two electrons. And what you need to do is take away the electrons from the highest energy level or the outermost shell, which in this case is the third shell. So we're going to remove these two electrons, giving us a configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So this is the electron configuration of the ion Mg2+. Now let's move on to our next example. So this is going to be the phosphide ion, P3-. Now there's something I want you to understand. Going back to the last example, we saw that magnesium had an atomic number of 12. As an atom, this means that it has 12 protons and 12 electrons. Keep in mind, atoms are electrically neutral, so the number of protons and electrons are the same. So for magnesium, that's why the sum of the exponents of the electron configuration added to 12. It's because it has 12 electrons. Now, when dealing with positively charged ions, the number of protons exceed the number of electrons. In Mg2+, there are two more protons than electrons. So we need to decrease the number of electrons by two. That's why the configuration was 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, because the exponents add up to 10, the number of electrons. Now, in the case of phosphorus, the atomic number is 15 which means that it has 15 protons. And as a neutral atom, it will also have 15 electrons. Now, as an ion, the situation is different. A negatively charged ion, also known as an anion, has more electrons than protons. So phosphide has three more electrons. So what we need to do is when we write the electron configuration for phosphorus, in order to write it for the phosphide ion, we need to add three to the number of exponents so that the total is 18. So when dealing with positively charged ions, you need to decrease the number of electrons by the charge. When dealing with negatively charged ions, you need to increase the number of electrons based on the charge. Now let's focus on a problem at hand. Let's write the electron configuration of the phosphide ion. So let's begin by writing the sublevels. Phosphorus is in the third row of the periodic table, so we only need to go to the 3s level. Keep in mind the s sublevel can hold up to two electrons, the p sublevel can hold a maximum of six electrons, and the d sublevel can hold a maximum of 10 electrons. And we need to get up to 18. But first, let's write the electron configuration of phosphorus, which goes up to 15. So it's going to be 1s2. After that, it's going to be 2s2. After 2s, it's 2p and then 3s. So 2p6, 3s2. Right now, we have a total of 12 if we add up the exponents.
And then after the rest, we're going to move on into, let's undo that. So after 3S, we're going to move on to the 3P sublevel, and we're going to stop at 3P3. So that's the electron configuration for an atom of phosphorus. Now for the P3 minus ion, we simply need to add 3 to this exponent. So the configuration is going to be 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, and then 3P6. So if you add up the exponents, the sum total is 18, because the phosphide ion has 18 electrons in total. So that's how you can write the electron configuration of a negatively charged ion. You need to increase the number of electrons based on the negative charge that you see. Now for the next example, we're going to write the electron configuration for the Fe2 plus ion and also the Fe3 plus ion. Now, if you want to try this problem, feel free to do so. Go ahead, pause the video, and work on it. So let's begin by writing the sublevels. Fe is in the fourth row, so we're going to go up to 4s this time. S can hold up to 2 electrons, P can hold up to 6, D can hold up to 10, and how much can F hold? Notice the pattern, this is increasing by 4. So 10 plus 4 is 14. F can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. So first let's write the configuration for an atom of Fe. So we need to get up to 26. So first we have 1s2, next is 2s2, and then after that it's 2p, then 3s. So we have 2p6, 3s2, and then it's 3p, and then 4s. So 3p6, 4s2. Right now, if we add up the exponents, this is 10. And then this is another 10, so we have a total of 20 right now. So we need six more. So we could stop at the 3D level. D can hold up to 10, so we'll stop at 3D6. This is the ground state electron configuration for an atom of iron, Fe. So now that we have that, we can now write the electron configuration for the transition metal ions, Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. So when dealing with cations, or positively charged ions, you need to remove electrons. So in the case of Fe2+, we need to take away two electrons. Now here's a question for you. Should we remove the two electrons from the 4s level or from the 3d level? When dealing with these type of problems, you want to remove the electrons from the highest energy level, or the outermost shell in this case, from the fourth shell before you move it from the three shell. So we're going to take away the two electrons from the 4s level as opposed to the 3d level. So we'll be left with 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Now at this point you can either write 4s0 or you can just omit it together. Just to keep track of things, I'm going to write 4s0 and then 3d6. So that is the electron configuration of the Fe2 plus ion. Now, let's move on to the last ion, Fe3 plus. Now, in this case, we need to take away three electrons as opposed to two. And we're gonna start by removing the electrons from the highest energy level. So the first two electrons we're going to take are the 4s2 electrons. And then we're going to take one from the 3d sublevel. So instead of having 3d6, we're going to have 3d5. Thus, the electron configuration of the Fe3 plus ion is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 
3s2, 3p6, 4s0, 3d5. Let me uh, delete these things since they're getting in the way. Now notice the total number of, uh, let me say that again. Notice the total number of electrons in Fe3+. Plus. It's 26 minus 3, which is 23. So when checking your work, the sum of these exponents must add to 23. Right now this is 10, 12, 18, and then 18 plus 5 is 23. So this is the ground state electron configuration for the Fe3 plus ion. So now you know how to write the electron configuration of ions. So remember, when dealing with positively charged ions, you need to remove electrons based on the charge. And you want to begin with the highest energy level. When dealing with negatively charged electrons, you need to add to the electron configuration based on the charge.